Hey there Barnwell folks and welcome to another cooking session with Clemson Snap Ed. So today we're going to be going through some sweet and savory options for you for your snacking pleasure. So stay tuned. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and make is our banana bread, alright? Now banana bread is pretty common in households and actually has been common since about the 18th century and became really popularized around the 1930s with house moms. Now listen, I know that you've probably made banana bread about a million times at home, but the one I'm going to show you today has only 9 grams of sugar in it, alright? 9 grams. That's a pretty big deal, especially if you're dealing with chronic illnesses like diabetes. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and mash up these bananas. And honestly, I personally love recipes like this because this is a bit of a stress reliever. After a long day, you just come home and you take your stress or whatever is going on out on your bananas. So we're just going to go ahead and peel these bad boys. And the reason why I'm doing them in a separate bowl is because the recipe requires about one and one third cup of bananas and again that's mashed bananas so i'm doing it in a separate bowl to make sure i'm not adding too much and also that i'm really not adding too little so we'll go ahead and get those bad boys mashed up and i'm using a fork but you can also use say a plastic zip zip block bag i always have problems saying that word but a little plastic sandwich bag with say your hands or a mallet, rolling pin, what have you. I like using the fork because it helps me to get the mashed bananas nice and fine. So I get a nice even consistency, no little lumps and clumps here and there. I don't know about you, but I've never liked banana clumps in my banana bread, but if you like it, that's perfect. So that is the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do, is just go ahead and mash up those bananas. And then again, we're going to measure out one and one third cup of mashed bananas. And that's going to be our first ingredient. And we're doing the wet ingredients first, and then we're going to mix those up. And then afterwards, we're going to add in our dry ingredients. And our dry ingredients are, of course, going to be our flour, baking powder, baking soda, things like that. And then we'll add them together. And you typically, most folks will go ahead and add the wet and the dry ingredients in the same bowl. That's also okay as well. But if you're someone who's, say, new to cooking these things in the home, it's always a good idea to add them separately. So your wet ingredients versus your dry ingredients. So if you make a mistake, you can always start over and not have to redo the entire bowl. So definitely keep them separate. Same thing with cracking an egg. If you're not used to cracking an egg or you always accidentally get shells and things, do it in a separate bowl and then just add it in later. No need to get fancy. I won't tell on you. So I'm getting a nice even consistency with my mashed bananas. Making sure I don't have a whole bunch of lumps and clumps because, again, I personally don't like the clumps as much. But, again, if you're a fan of it, definitely leave them in there. Alright. And you can't see her, but my dog is like right down on the floor. Hoping that I'll drop some banana because she loves eating mashed up bananas so she can smell it and she's excited already. I'm not sharing now. All right. And now the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is get our one and one third cup of mashed bananas and add them to our mixing bowl. So I'm just going to go ahead and start scooping that in there. Okay. So this right here is nice. Happy, even, one-third cup. I'm going to go ahead and scoop that out. And then, and I might need to get more bananas. Oops, 
Here we go. Pull it out with tools. So this is a nice, happy full cup right here. And so I'll need, I believe, just one more banana to make that one third. So I went ahead and grabbed that last banana and I'm just gonna go ahead and mash this guy up as quick as I can. And again, this is one and one third a cup of mashed bananas. So getting that last bit in. I've already gotten a nice full cup in there. Make sure I don't let that slide out. So now I just need one more cup to, or one more one third cup to even this out. Now the recipe itself calls for four medium bananas, but I don't usually sit in the store and look, this is a large, this is a medium, this is a small. Short ones are a little bit easier to tell apart than other ones. But thankfully the recipe has the actual measuring cup sizes on there, so we're pretty set. want the same consistency. No lumps and clumps. All right, now that I've gotten that done, I'm gonna go ahead and set the fork off to the side and scoop out that last one-third cup. And add it to my wet ingredients. So, super simple. All right, so now that we've got our nice, same consistency banana mixture in there, next thing we're gonna go ahead and add is our one large egg. So I'm gonna crack this. And again, you don't have to do this in the exact same bowl. If you haven't done this a lot of times or if you just always accidentally get the shell in there, do it in a separate bowl. It, comes out the same way, it's perfectly fine. And then of course, the next thing we're gonna do is add in a little bit of vanilla. So according to our recipe, our vanilla extract is just gonna be one little tablespoon. So, ooh. Now the bananas, are going to add quite a bit of sweetness because they are quite a sugary fruit. And this vanilla extract is just gonna add a little punch of flavor, all right? So no need to add several pounds, ounces, whatever the case may be of sugar. Got a little vanilla on my fingers. So no need to add several pounds of sugar in order to make this sweet. You can just as easily get away with adding in a little extra banana. So we've gone ahead and gotten our egg in there. We've gotten our bananas in there and our vanilla extract. Now it looks like we need to add three tablespoons of brown sugar, all right? So let's go ahead and get in there and do that. And that's light brown sugar, by the way. Not dark brown, light brown. Now, some may be wondering, especially if you haven't cooked in the kitchen very often, what the difference between light brown and dark brown brown sugar is. Well, the reason why brown sugar is different from regular granulated white sugar is that it actually has molasses in it. And so what you're tasting, that interesting, deep, rich flavor, is the different amounts of molasses. So light brown sugar, of course, has less molasses than dark brown sugar. So not gonna taste the sweet, and it's going to, of course, change the flavor of your foods. So let's see, we had three tablespoons of light brown sugar. So that's one. And you always wanna make sure to compact your brown sugar, all right? So you want a nice, even top. So we 
have our light brown sugar. Putting that on out the way. All right, and then next thing we want our regular granulated sugar. And with that bad boy, we are just going to put in two tablespoons. And I'm gonna do this off to the side because our granulated sugar doesn't have that molasses in it. And so it's gonna be a little more loose and we might accidentally add too much. So remember, never pour it over the bowl if you're just unsure. And I need two tablespoons of this. All right, so very, very little amounts of sugar, all right? We're talking tablespoons, not cups. Because again, we have so, we have so much banana in our banana bread that we're making right now, which has only nine grams of sugar, I'm just gonna throw that back out there again, that you're really not gonna need a whole lot of sugar because bananas are naturally sweet. And again, you have that vanilla extract to add that punch of flavor, so no worries. We're not missing out. Let's see now, we've got our sugars, our vanilla extract, our egg, and of course our bananas for our banana bread. But the next thing we're going to need, according to our recipe, is one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, which I have, of course. And thankfully, the opening of my seasoning is just big enough for my measuring spoon, so I don't have to do any awkward pouring. I'm going to level that off just as much as possible, and that is one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, again for a punch of flavor. All right, so we got our ground cinnamon in there. I'm going to add that back to my seasoning collection, and then one teaspoon of ba oh, I'm jumping ahead. Look at me. All right, so we got our ground cinnamon in there, and now we need to stir well to combine, so let's go ahead and do that. Right, so make sure that egg gets broken apart. Make sure we get all that mixture off the sides of the bowl because we don't want to miss anything. And we definitely don't want banana and sugar clumps everywhere. And that is our wet mixture of our wet ingredients. Excuse me, getting done there. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do for this portion is essentially just to mix the dry ingredients, all right? Same thing as the wet ingredients. Um, whatever you're a little nervous about, feel free to do over the sink, feel free to do over in a separate bowl, and then add them in later. So let's begin. So the first thing we're gonna do is add in that one teaspoon of baking powder that I spoke of earlier. And we wanna get that nice and even as possible. So we got our one teaspoon of baking powder in there. And then our uh, one teaspoon of baking soda. Alright, so one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and then only, only half a teaspoon of salt, alright? Not a lot, just half a teaspoon. And again, loose granules, so I'm gonna just take this over to the sink and use that. Now, if you're watching your sodium intake and this is just too much salt, it's possible to cut down on it. Or maybe moderate how much of the banana bread you're gonna eat, so watch your intake. And so we got our half a teaspoon of salt. Let's put that up there. And then the last thing we're gonna do is to, of course, add in our flour because you can't break a bake of bread without flour. So, I'll go ahead and I'm going to get out one and a half cups, right? One and a half cups. Go ahead and scoop these bad boys out. Now, you also have the option of using whole wheat flour, all right? That's a great option for getting in your whole grains. Now, if you're someone who, say, 
has issues with your kidneys and can't necessarily intake whole grain, then of course your all-purpose white enriched flour works just the same. Make sure I'm getting it nice and even. Too much flour and it comes out dry. Not enough flour and it's a little floppy and doesn't hold out well. All right. Check my work, guys. I think, I think I did it. All right, cool. So, one. And a half cups, so one and a half cups of all purpose flour. All right, adding that in there. All right, and then we need two tablespoons of unsalted butter. So, lucky for me, my butter is essentially pre marked by the manufacturer. However, if yours isn't, feel free to slice off a chunk. And you can either use a butter knife to go ahead and smooth it into a measuring cup, or you could slice off a chunk, melt it a little bit, see if it's enough. If it's not, slice off a smaller chunk, melt that as well, then add it into your previously melted butter. There are different ways of doing it. So don't freak out if you pop off a chunk and it doesn't work out the first round. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and mark on my butter very gently without ripping the wax paper where my two tablespoons are. And then I'm just going to remove the wax paper and cut that bit of butter off. And of course, this will get wrapped back up and put right back into the fridge. All right. And out. Add this to the microwave. So now that I've gone ahead and melted my butter, essentially the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just mix up my dry ingredients. Make sure they are nice and well combined. And then I'll add my dry ingredients to my wet ingredients that we previously put together earlier. So that's that granulated sugar, those bananas, vanilla extract, the egg. And again, making sure those are well combined. All right, so let's get to adding. And And now, of course, you can use a mixer for this, but I I like getting the arm workout. If you're a fan of that, I definitely recommend. But also, again, you can use a kitchen mixer. You'll have the same results. Mm, and I can already smell the sweetness of that vanilla and those bananas and the spicy kick of that cinnamon. Getting that all nice and mixed up in there. Again, we don't want any clumps, so no flour clumps, none of that. So getting that nice and well mixed in. Make sure you get all of the batter off the sides. Because again, you want a nice even consistency. All right. And now we're going to take our melted butter and we're going to pour it in there. And then we're going to go ahead and mix that up one more time. And again, remember, scrape the sides. You want even consistency. Okay. 
then again, you've probably made banana bread about a million times, whether you learned it from your mother, your grandmother, grandfather, your dad, cousin, uncle, whomever it may be. This banana bread is going to be a little different because, again, we're not really focusing on adding too much sugar or too much salt. This is going to have reduced salt, reduced sugar, and still have that sweetness and that flavorful punch. And again, that flavorful punch comes from that vanilla extract as well as the cinnamon. And that sweetness doesn't come as much from the sugar because remember, we only put about a couple tablespoons of our white brown sugar and our white granulated sugar in there. It's going to come from those naturally sweet bananas. All right. So now we got a nice banana bread batter going. And you have multiple options. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pan this bad boy. And you have multiple options for coating your pan, all right? I love using my aerosol sprays, but another option for you would be to take a little bit of canola or vegetable oil, paper towel, go ahead and put wet the paper towel with the canola or vegetable oil, and then rub around the pan. Another option would be to, again, either using your aerosol spray or melting a little bit of butter and then rubbing that with a paper towel all around the pan as well. So you've got, again, multiple options for going ahead and wetting up that pan. And the reason why we do that is just so as the bread bakes, it doesn't stick to the pan. We want our bread outside the pan and into our stomachs, not stuck in the pan. So we're going to go ahead and do a nice coating on there. Because again, I don't want it to stick. And the aerosol sprays, whether it's baking spray, whether it's canola oil, vegetable oil, really do the same job. It's just to make sure nothing sticks. All right. And I'll just gonna make sure I get this nice and evenly in there. So I'm gonna pour that in. Make sure I get every last bit because we don't want to miss a thing. And again, I'm getting a huge blast of that cinnamon. And the sweetness of that vanilla. So I am so excited to try this once it comes out of the oven. And I, as I said earlier, we've got the sweet and the savory. So we just got through doing the sweet with our banana bread, which is going to go into the oven at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes. The next thing we're going to do is work on our savory, and that is our bruschetta. So get ready.